<laughs> Hi, everybody, and thanks so much for tuning in. I thought I'd bring on Pete from the Body Mapper to chat to you all things industry and specifically about his amazing education. So, Pete, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure, Teresa. Good to be here. Amazing. I thought, well, a lot of the time when I do these webcasts, I sort of plan some questions. I have a bit of an idea of where we're going, but you have no idea where I'm going with these questions. It's not because we didn't want to be prepared, but P is very happy to pretty much be asked anything. That's what he said. So <laughs> with that in mind, <laughs> I want, like I say, I wanted to pick your brain. You've been in the industry for a long time, an amazing educator. That's why we've got four of your amazing educations on our platform. But I wanted to um, get get inside your brain a little bit of why you've created things, what, where you think the industry is going, the sort of wants and wishes for the industry as well. And with that insight, so I think that'll be really an informative um, and educational sort of tune in for the people watching or listening. So thank you for joining us. So the first thing I wanted to ask you, obviously, with the body mapping course, it's really explores much deeper into anatomy, anatomy and physiology. But I wanted to check in with you. Why on earth do you think that's relevant to a fitness professional? <laughs> it's a million dollar question, right? I get yeah. asked that, um, well, not all the time, but uh, particularly with the anatomy and physiology, uh, there, there is a, a, there's a body of people out there who are like, is it relevant? You know, do, do I actually really need this for, for what I'm doing? Especially as the fitness industry is diversified. Um, now it's not just face-to-face -face training. With the advent of lockdown, of course, a lot of people develop their online skills and, and online coaching really has gone through the roof. So it, is it still relevant? I think is it a question that needs to be answered? And, and for me, it is because I'm not just an educator, I am a practitioner. So I see clients have a small client base and I guess all education should be able to ask itself the question, um, is it relevant to something you do? Uh, it's all very well being nice, having um, brightly colored pens as our stuff does, but is it relevant? And for my business, yes, it is very relevant. As for where it came from, and if anybody hasn't looked at it, it's um, going for a very visual approach to learning anatomy and physiology, physiology and the function of it. So for example, I draw things on people a lot. And that wasn't just um, an idea that came out of the blue. And there are other people who do that, I hasten to add. But it was from when I when I was a, a lecturer um, at a training provider in the industry, go back uh, 1997, I started with, with them. So no. yeah, in the best of time. <laughs> and I don't even remember how I came to it, whether somebody else suggested it, but I started drawing on people's knees, for example, um, showing bones, muscles, uh, ligaments, uh, cartilage, all that kind of thing. And their understanding snapped into position much, much quicker than when I had drawn things on the board or I had, you know, used the manual uh, to explain which, which are fine they have their place but something happened uh, and people were quite excited and they would say things like I really didn't get it up until that point now I understand and so I use that for a number of years and it's always a good interaction I mean drawing on people is a laugh anyway it's, yeah. it's good fun um, <laughs> but people would connect into it and then I could test their knowledge of muscular function uh, of movement, et cetera, et cetera, whether it's for rehab or fitness. And I found they did better with it. So that's where the essence of body mapping came in because it's like a bridge between the written word and the practical act of doing fitness, let's say, let's call it that. Yeah. Uh, and for a lot of people, that gap was too big so they weren't able to make the leap and they were frustrated and they would say, I, I, I can't understand the book or it's too complicated. Yeah. Can you make this simpler? Uh, so it's about making that transition into the real world. So today, you know, I, I've seen clients this morning. I'm still thinking that visual way that I use in the body mapper, you know, showing all those structures. Yeah. Um, so that's why I created it. Um, yeah. So is it relevant in my book? Yes. If you work the way I do, it's incredibly relevant. Yeah. When I um, was doing a lot of educating, 
Um, I worked in level two, level three, and of course we had to teach anatomy and physiology. And genuinely, so many people struggled. They'd mm. see a picture and they couldn't quite understand it. But then you saw that they understood it. If, if they were to see that picture again, they'd mm. be able to explain that what that was. But it was like the picture they, they were able to understand. But if you were to say, well, whereabouts is that on your body? Can you feel this, that, and the other? It re that started to sort of sink in a little bit better for them. And I don't think it was till I was, I'd come up with sort of analogies and, and get people to feel things, you know, go up to the skeleton and then feel it on themselves. And you'd be like, what, I'm, I'm one of these, you know, it was a really yeah. like little light bulb moments. And then when I started teaching um, sports massage, that was when I started drawing on people as well, yeah. because I just was, I was just like, you know, they'd be, you know, like struggling to understand all this. And I got it. I fully understood. It was really hard. They'd be, you know, l having to learn a name that made no sense to them. So then we worked out why they were called those things. And there'd be a little light bulb moment and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But I, you know, I think that there's a lot of people who have, have to learn certain things, but they don't fully understand it. You know, it's almost like, you know, they can pass an exam, but then, wow, you know, it's almost like they forget it. I've even heard educators say, well, you only need to know this for your exam. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. Yeah, I know. You know, and when I took this role, and I think it's probably good for people tuning in to understand why we took this. I was I found your education and I was like, oh, this is wicked because it's kind of I, I was thinking, oh, this would be brilliant mm -hmm. for my sports massage people. This would be brilliant. So that all the people that I've taught through anatomy and physiology, but it's not just you writing on people that you've then got kind of computer stuff going on. So that it's 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 not just, oh, let's write on. You sort of build up their level of understanding and this really, really, from an educator's point of view, are like a really refreshing and exciting way. You bring it to life. And I think that's really, really important. Yeah. So what would you say to the people who are still a little unconvinced that they will learn? How do you think your method method is actually going to help them? OK, so we spent a lot of time. It happened in lockdown when, you know, yeah. when everything crashed and then you realized that you were probably going to be sitting at home having a coffee for a few days thinking what you were going to do about things. Um, yeah. And that's what I did. And I thought how did I learn back then? And it, actually, when I analysed it, there was a process to my learning, even though I didn't really know it. And so I distilled it down into see, feel, map, move, memorise. Uh, because I came on board at a training provider where the standards were really high. And I have to admit, I was intimidated as a new trainer in thinking, how am I going to be that good? I, I just don't know how I'm going to do it. And I realized that I had to go to the book first. And so, you know, um, reference what I said earlier, I've got nothing against books. Books are cool uh, up to a point. So I'd look in the books and identify muscles, um, I'd do uh, origins and insertions. And I'd do things like open the page, close it up, and then recite the names back and then open it up. So seeing stuff was important. And not just in the book, then seeing things on a skeleton or in different contexts, like you said, was also important. It's like that picture relates to that skeleton, relates to that person. So how could I make seeing transition into a real person? And feeling, I found that palpating structures made all the difference yeah. uh, to my visualization. Because if you palpate, let's say, the, the condyles of the femur, as you trace around it with your fingers, you're building an image in your mind. It's like a virtual person. Mm -hmm. So, uh, And it's because I taught sports therapy, you see, so palpation was important. So feeling structures, really useful. Mapping then, the drawing thing, I, I'm really adamant about this because there are other people out there with great visual aids and, you know, really cool stuff. But my thought is, yes, watch it and look at the pretty lines and go, OK, I get it. But then do it. Yeah. If you can actually draw structures on somebody yourself. Your level of knowledge has already leapt up 10 notches. So mapping is not just looking at mapping. It's doing it yourself. 
And I'm actually finally now, what, two and a half years after those original ideas uh, for the latest evolution, I'm thinking about drawing on my clients as part of the initial uh, process and filming it. You know, looking at postural, not abnormalities, but postural variations, drawing in the lines of like my, my fascial lines, filming it and showing it to the client and yeah. say, this is here and that's there and this might be a challenge. So it's going to bring it to life for them. So that's the mapping. Then the moving, again, that, that contextual leap, it's all very well seeing it and maybe being able to draw it. But once it's moving, can you visualize what's happening? I found that teaching students the analysis of the biomechanics of movement in sports people is fascinating. So I, I look at people like Roger Federer. Uh, I look at rugby players, you know, like, I don't know, Owen Farrell kicking a ball, England rugby. And I say, right, let's stop, slow it down. Can you now tell me everything that's happening at every stage of this movement in terms of muscular loading, joint loading? And of course, if you've got the foundation, you can do it. If you haven't, you're guessing. <clears throat> and, and if you intend, you know, a lot of people in our industry like to work with sports people, right? Uh, that's all very well, but what are you going to bring to them that they haven't seen before? And this kind of movement analysis is definitely new in that way. So that was the, the movement. And then finally, memorizing actually technically was bringing it all together at the same yeah. time. But I also like putting time mechanisms on it and I still yet to explore this fully but one of my students about five years ago I set a challenge said can you name I forget how many structures it was but about 230 structures in the skeleton I said three and a half minutes can you do it and she did it and it really she, she's so skelly you know starting from skelly right at the bottom with you know the foot all of the tarsals metatarsals yeah. phalanges working up tibia femur blah 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 all the way to the top and she named everything and that was also revealing to me because it was a game it was fun yes. working yeah. against the clock so i've I, in my head here's something i haven't said for ages but I <laughs> the idea of different professions standing one skeleton each stop what <laughs> goes on and who can name the 230 structures the quickest wow wow you're on my team. <laughs> on my team that's it so i think um again as an educator we understand that this idea of sort of building upon something building upon something building upon something and so that's kind of embedded isn't that in with what yeah. your structure of the education is i always used to um it's interesting hearing about the sort of timing thing and the person saying the stuff i used to also find that people being able to tell somebody else about what they've seen or involving yeah. somebody else made it different and made it out of here. Yeah. And actually, I think a lot of people learning, you know, still struggle with fear of getting something wrong when it's play, when it's fun, when it's this, it feels like there's, it's not a problem if they don't know, they're not yeah. being quizzed if something is right or wrong. And I think it's really important, isn't it, to have this lovely supportive environment where it's not like a lot of people just can't memorize things. Well, yeah. you know, if you're saying that's, you know, right down the line, they'll get it because they understand it. But, you know, you are lucky that you could do the flipping of the page and, and memorize. Yeah. But not everybody can do that, can they? Or wants to. No. One of the things I wanted to ask you about is how do you get, because you said about, you know, with your clients that you were thinking about involving that. And I remember speaking to you previously about this, that you said that when you had done it a few times on clients, your clients were like, what? You do that. You, they were kind yes. of, not only did it help them, but it also made them go, wow, you really know your stuff. Now, I believe that the fitness professional who just goes out there saying all the fancy names of things doesn't win any clients <laughs> you know they you know do they if they just like well this is the and this is the and the we're stretching the, the, the. so that's not what you're saying is it you're it am i right i'm thinking that you're saying that a fitness professional can learn and and, and stuff but how could they incorporate this knowledge with sort of making their client feel that you know a bit like that light bulb moment with you where they feel wow you know this stuff but 
how, how could they incorporate it with the yeah. sort of Without communication with a client? Yeah, like or, you're or trying either. to sell lots of words. Yeah, exactly. Look at, look at my words. <laughs> um, it, I guess it's choosing the right time. And I don't have a set recipe to that. But what I do look to do in every single session is give them something that helps their understanding. And it might be very small, so it doesn't it doesn't involve complex words, but it draws on my understanding um, and adds to theirs so that, you know, some of my clients, so I've got clients I've been working with for five years, even if you've only added a tiny bit once every week or whatever it is, when you get several years in, they've got quite a bank of knowledge and for me, it's always been an ambition at the point when they leave you, which will happen, they can walk away and go, you know what, I know so much more about my my body. So right. I'm always, you, you know, I was talking about the visualizing earlier. I'm looking at them exercising, but I'm seeing their skeleton. I'm seeing the muscle. I'm seeing the myofascial lines, which, which is something I'm really interested in and thinking are they moving in a way which is exercising the way i intended and then if i say right can you adjust this and i'll say things like you know i want you to drive some force down into your left hip after a time if you keep feeding that into them they get it you know to, using a mace for example i use uh, maces yeah. which are fab medieval tools uh, <laughs> and i say right as you drop the mace down there catch catch the momentum with your hip get your glutes loading up and then spring back up, you know, and that little context, it's not too complicated, but it's really useful information for them to understand why it is that they're getting good results. Right. And as PTs, fitness professionals, we, we should be empowering our clients. So we're not spoon feeding them. Really, we should be, in, whilst we want business, we should be empowering them so that they feel, you know, capable of moving without us, right? Yeah. And really that they could eventually train themselves, yes. you know, that we don't have to ha hold their hand. I, I know it's always sad to see a client go, but actually if they're going for the right reasons because they feel ready to do mm -hmm. that, that's that's kind of a good thing, right? Um, or sick of the dad jokes. Sorry? <laughs> or sick of the dad jokes. They're like, I can't stand it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine <laughs> feedback form you know what was it it was your dad jokes or yeah. maybe you didn't provide enough dad jokes I don't know I don't know whether you're talking about me or yourself so myself um okay good I wouldn't good. presume <laughs> no don't don't <laughs> my, my jokes are dreadful almost as good as my singing so <laughs> obviously we have it online so your course is online you know as you said earlier you said that you brought this about um, in lockdown times. So how do you think it can work online if you haven't got bodies in front of you? That's a really, a really good question. There's always been a battle in my head because whilst mm -hmm. my education was born in a face-to-face -face arena, and I, I know like probably every other lecturer that it is the best environment. There's so much more you can do spontaneously, you know, look at this, then do that. Um, interaction etc but reality is times have moved on and education's firmly on online and it it's not going to change so I guess and if you look at well most of the videos that I post I'll give a summary at the end and say look it's all very well watching these and I could even put you know tick box answers but that really isn't the value the value is going out to use it so um, if you're an experienced practitioner, it's I've learned how those joints load up in gait. I'm going to use that with my clients tomorrow and I'm going to give them a little bit of information on why pronation and supination happens in the in the foot and what muscles are involved. And, and that's the thing. You've got to be brave. Get out there. Use it. Risk being wrong. Risk getting tongue tied. Yes. risk a client asking you a question you don't know the answer mm -hmm. unless you do those things and the education even the body mapper stuff is of limited value yeah absolutely you've got to implement it and i i remember you saying just earlier about the fact that you worked for a training provider and they renowned for having exceptional educators right and so you had to up your game I did. right um to to be relevant 
to be able to stand next to them and be taken seriously and all mm. of these things. And that's, you know, that's as an educator, but actually our clients do expect it of us as well. They, you know, I think if we said to most clients, oh, I did a weekend course, you know, and, and I'm basically looking after your body and everything you want to achieve. I mean, I don't think clients would think that what happens we just hope, don't we, as educators and people who are really proud of this industry, that people will take it upon themselves to upskill, be curious, be inquisitive. And like you say, risk being wrong, risk saying the word wrong and stuff like that and actually reaching out to people and and sort of, you know, going, I'm not sure about that. And I, in the last few chats I've had with people, it's uh, my view is that as you get further and further along in your career you are more comfortable about being curious and and wanting and and I see people who are really successful who are like the most educated and wise and knowledgeable and give out so much they're the ones still really trying to be curious you know like maybe even with your clients this morning thinking "Hmm, what you know and and that's what I think we need to be able to encourage people in the industry if they haven't done something for a while to just lock in and 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 do it and people coming into the industry is it's daring to be brave enough isn't it Mm. to admit that you don't know it and actually so many people I think with anatomy and physiology don't get it and that's okay because actually often with no disrespect to educators because it's hard they've Mm. probably been taught as if it is a manual you know Mm. this is a picture and so that's why I think this education, what you're doing is really amazing. And it's so lovely to hear that you are using it as a practitioner. So rather than going, hmm, this is, you know, from an education point of view, I don't do this day in, day out. You are using it as part of your, you know, every day. And that's why you're successful. So I think people should do the course. I think you'd probably agree as well. <laughs> um, so what are your thoughts on the industry right now? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, I, ha- I have to um, balance my thoughts on this. Uh, so I obviously I've, I've had a few conversations with you and, and other people in various areas of the industry, whether it's educator side or operator side uh, or member of the public side, lest we forget those are the people yes. who had to be serving. And my clients do feed back to me what they think. Uh, so... Here's my thought about the industry. We've, there's no question we've achieved a lot as an industry in the sense it's bigger than it's ever been. Uh, there are more facilities than there have ever been. If you go into places now, the equipment's better than it's ever been. Um, and that's to be applauded, of course. And also there's been an increase in usage. So whilst we used to talk about 13% of the population um, go back, well, probably 15 years even, uh, it is up, but it's not a lot over 15%. And I don't know the exact figures, but I do know it's approximately that area. And that to me is worrying. Uh, and I, I tell you why it's worrying. It's because our NHS is collapsing, verging on collapsed. You know, when when do we discuss it doesn't have any capability to do anything it's set out to do? because it's overrun and that's not criticism of the nhs those poor people are working as hard as they can with the vast volume of people who are walking through the door and inevitably in my mind part of that is to do with the fact that not enough people exercise and not enough people pay attention to their diet and sleep let's say and recovery uh and we should we should feel responsible for that. So I find sometimes we are a little self-congratulatory with the figures that uh, we were just talking about. You know, it's great that we have advanced, not got anything against that. But we need to be asking ourselves tougher questions of why is it not more people are involved in exercise? And I know it's not a simple one, but I, I believe the future lies, and this is where my business is and is growing, You go to the person's doorstep, you bring exciting activity, and I deliberately say activity because it's a bit broader, you bring exciting activity to their doorstep, 
and you really tailor it down to the nth degree. I am not seeing that move to the best of my knowledge in any of the big operators. Why not? Why not? Why are we not getting beyond the, the four walls? And I know it's been talked about for a long time, but why is nobody doing anything about that? And there are precedents in other industries. So associated like massage, we had a discussion. Yeah, There is a company that I have worked for and both as a practitioner and then with the CEO, because he was interested in my viewpoint on this, where he brings massage to your door. You just dial it up uh, on an app and that person turns up tomorrow at 7.30 at your door and delivers the massage you want. So for me, it's only a matter of time before somebody does but that, that step needs to be taken because then the 15's got to go up. And certainly uh, my clients, because I, I ask them to feedback regularly, I don't just do an exit feedback thing when they disappear over the hill. That I get them to, to just be honest. And, and some of them, you know, who are extremely busy with their work, they said, if you didn't come to my house, I would not be using you. It's that simple. Lovely though you are and your dad jokes, uh, I wouldn't be paying for you. So you need to understand that that is a critical part of your offering that you come to my door. And I literally step out of my office in that room onto the driveway and we're in action. Yes. Yeah. So I do, re I do recognize though, Pete, that some people want to go somewhere, right? Yeah. But that's, you know, and they'll rock up and they'll do their session and it's their place and their space. And, and I, I think, you know, in lockdown, some people loved working out at home, but then they just wanted to go back to their little community. Yeah. But that you're right. There are so many clients who don't have the time, don't want to don't want to do that um, and don't want to be part of that scene, let's say. And, and perhaps they just want to know that you are present for them, yeah. you know, and that you're giving your complete self in order to look after them. Mm -hmm. um, so with the industry, <laughs> you know, there's some failings let's be honest if we're not getting enough people moving how i'm going to give you a magic wand okay so um i'm going to give you a few things in this conversation you can have a magic wand if you like you can have a looking glass and you can have time travel so you're very very lucky right so magic wand what are you going to do that you think would take us and up another five percent and it's not you turning up to their front door because you've already got enough clients what are you going to do to get another five percent moving okay if so you could I, for the industry I, I pick out the key word that you said which is community um and for the reasons you said i do understand why gyms have a sense of community and family and for some people it it means a massive amount to turn up and see the same faces friends and then to train with friends so it's important uh, there's been a trend already for a, a number of years of organizations like Tough Mudder, like Park Run, who've capitalized on that sense of uh, the outdoors and adventure. I'd say we need to keep going with that and keep scaling, you know, couch to 5K concepts, yeah. because it, me again, it meets the people in their environment, but there are other people involved. So, I, uh, for example, I took my clients to Tough Mudder this year and they loved it because it was just totally out there a lot of them either hadn't heard of it or had only briefly heard of it or you know had conceptions and when they did it it was just us all trundling around together telling yeah. stories and having a laugh and it was hugely social so yeah. that is what I would do more of is look to the community aspect sport mm -hmm. obviously already is quite a success I would say in this country in that, you know, um, let's say cycling, cycling took off after the 2012 Olympics. You see it now everywhere. Yeah. So let's continue to take leaves from those books for those people who just find it too intimidating a step to go into the yeah. gym for their reasons. You know, it's nothing the gym's doing wrong. It's their perception of what the yeah. gym is. Yeah. Okay. I'm happy with your magic one. That's great. So looking <laughs> glass. So what, if I could give you a looking glass and you could look anywhere in this industry that you feel would be very revealing for you, it would give you some more inspiration, it'd give you some insight, it would be, you just want to be nosy. Where, where Where's the looking glass going to take you if you're only going one place? Um, electronic. Uh, it's partially stimulated by one of my clients who 
sold uh, a company to Google. And so that is very much his sphere. So I ask him questions about, you know, what would you do? How would you grow this business bigger? Which I did for this previous step. And he said, you've got to look at electronic um, and think of a way to not completely automate because let's face it that's been done in large amounts you look at um peloton yeah. and the other associated yeah. areas they've pulled fully electronic instructors into your room and i think that's brilliant now the question is can you have electronic coupled with a person that would be interesting to me and i'm trying to think how that would work whether it's you know, because you're delivering a live session, it is you, it's not a recording of you. Uh, and you've got lots of clients out there. I guess Joe Wicks was the, was the ultimate yeah. demonstration of that. He used electronic, um, yeah. the internet, Instagram, and he accessed vast populations, you know, for his exercise sessions. And everybody's yeah. heard about their exercise with Joe sessions. And, what you know, whatever we think of him, he's had a massive effect on the country 100 percent, absolutely um i might be my own opinion so um a lot of people i've seen really slate him yeah and i think a lot of the time for the success rather than which i just uh, feels it's just such a sad thing to be putting down someone for being successful it may not be that his technique's the most brilliant but who's it you know it's just a really interesting thing when you used to get people into you know to talking about someone you say who inspires you who you know and they talk about business and they, there'd be some people go i think joe wicks is what he's done is amazing and there'll be other people going oh, really? and i'd be like wow it's just really interesting and i you know what whatever we think of him he has he has made ripples to to us not mm. us as fitness professionals but actually a community even if it was getting kids moving yep. with their parents you know maybe they only did it a few times in lockdown but it was something wasn't it that a lot of other people didn't do you know so yeah i tell you what it's a really good point you make um and i've had a conversation with all my clients about this this week mm -hmm. uh I understand the bitterness only in the sense of success. A lot, a lot of people struggle and they'll say, yeah, and he never even completed his course and he's not that qualified and he's not very technically able and he does the same exercises. But my answer to that is look in the book. He has engaged more people in this country to, to try exercise. Uh, and I also hear the arguments about you know physio bookings rose a million fold after exercise with joe because people were getting injured uh, i understand about that thought but still yes. still overall he's had an impact on people's view of exercise and enjoyment yes. i'm having fun i'm not feeling like i'm being tortured i'm not feeling embarrassed about my weight I'm not feeling intimidated by the fact that all the people over there look so fit and I'll never be like that. People did it and he did it with good humor. He never pretended to be, you know, a movement specialist. No. Never no. pretended to be that. He pretended to be basically the boy next, bo next door. I'm your mate. I'm very relaxed. I know a few exercises. Do you want to do them with me? And should we Absolutely. have a look? Do the you know, funny dance. <laughs> <laughs> I remember um my son so he's now coming up to 10 and um he he watched it a bit and did a bit and we, but we did other things together whether it was a bit of yoga a bit of meditation we had it sort of set out in the day and what we're doing and we did do some of his sessions and it was really interesting because Henry knows me as a teacher and and stuff and I'd done some online stuff and things but he set up his own class and you know he was he got he was like mum can you video it and he got this mat out and he did it you know and it was almost staged like what we he had seen and i was just thinking well you know that's con something's contagious here you know it wasn't just because i was doing it he had seen other people you know teaching and leading and stuff and i thought i thought that was you know kind of cool yeah so i had you so far i've had a magic wand and a looking glass i'm going to give you time travel i mean i this is you're very lucky so time travel are you going forwards or are you going backwards 
you're mm. it's only in the industry it's nothing to do with your own life i'm talking just about the industry um so would you go backwards or would you go forwards would it be to you know tell your younger self do this or would it be that you want to see forward so you can predict what we and tell us wh where are you going with your time travel wow that's that's quite a tough one <laughs> Sorry. Um, not that I'm ever particularly lost for words, but um, yeah, that's a very open question. Would I want to go backwards or forwards? Um, I'm excited by forwards. You know, when I see things like uh, electronic and cameras being used to do operations, somebody's in Japan, they're a doctor and they do an operation in London. I'm like, oh, OK, that's that's pretty exciting. Um, I, where does that go? Where do we go next with that? Because that's utilization of skills in one part of the globe in another part. Um, and think about education. So my new venue, yeah. I'm thinking we should be setting up the camera and just rolling the camera every day and doing some things so that people could tune in from New York or Buenos Aires, wherever they are in the world. Uh, so yeah, I'd like to see where that kind of virtual use and on that note sort of holographic figures mm. you know where's where's that going to feature and I don't 100% know but could I be a hologram in a <laughs> living room in Sydney so that yeah. people felt more of a connection with me that yeah. kind of thing is oh, that that is exciting isn't it and again you know um with the industry sometimes we are a little bit um we want to progress but yeah. we sometimes struggle a little bit with progress <laughs> you mm -hmm. know things developments and stuff and um yeah i just find it really interesting you know when the whole online thing happened and people are like well i'm not going to do it because it's not so you know but when it was locked down and there was no other option everyone went do you know what there really is a value in this because otherwise we're all just going to be sat on our backsides for you know um well years let's be honest um okay so progress then for you in your career um what do you what do you want to see um happen for you i know that you said that you said something about a new venue something so what, what's progress looking for you yeah year? no things are as exciting as i can remember um since back in those heady days of lecturing when it was all so new and exciting um yeah i'm opening a new venue which is a small venue in a town called petersfield in hampshire and it really is not not big it's you know in that boutique studio category uh, it's even an odd shape it's 40 odd feet long uh, but only uh, and 15 feet wide so it's an it's an odd kind of shape uh, but i want it to become a hub uh, and i'm going to take on board trainers most likely trainers and what I'm excited about is creating an end-to-end -end scenario so my, my education with the body mapper then becomes relevant because I'll say if you want to work with the body mapper then you need to look at the educational approach and become very proficient at it much as those memories from the training provider for me in the past it's like if you want to be here that's cool but you've got to be up this high um, and if that's not your bag, then no problem at all. But we can't we can't work together because yeah. my business is predicated on face to face connection, which is where I love being. I like people. Um, yeah. And so I see if I can create a hub that has I don't know how many trainers in it, five. But the hub is not I'm going to train indoors. It's just this is where the education takes place and we meet. But we're going to train people out in the parks and at home. And this is just a place we drop back into, let's say, film an assessment or have a have a team meeting. So it's a hub. If I can get this moving, several of my clients have already said we would like to be first on the investment route. Because at the moment yeah. I'm saying I don't want investment yet. I need to prove this works. The education leading into being a practitioner and growing, being mentored exactly like we we're talking earlier it's like see uh the you know the spiral line on the video in yeah. the afternoon do the exercises yourself and then tomorrow morning do it with your clients yeah. seeing that step-by-step -step process i think will be re rewarding for other people so long and the short of it is if that venue works 
there are a lot of spaces appearing on high streets across the UK because retail is decimated. So there are empty spaces in our, our town too. And I only need a small space to create a hub. Could it then become a small, um, small training venue across the UK, deliberately not large and deliberately not gym-like, one-to-one movement-based stuff, and then all the trainers can look forward to being supported and, and mentored. So they, when they run into the brick walls, which always happens, they can sit down and say, right, I had a problem this morning with a client. It was a bit embarrassing. I said this and it didn't work very well. What, what does anybody think? What should we do? So that you have a sense of working with each other, which some PT studios I have been to, they already have it. But a lot of places, it's dog eat dog. It's like, I'm not going to yes. give you my secrets. You'll nick I my know. clients. I know. And that's, it is very weird that, but I do hear it. And um, a lot of people going into the industry fear this sort of competitive thing where they're having to work against um, and having to prove themselves. Mm. And I, I, I have to be honest, I find that really sort of disappointing about our industry I've seen you know even on social media a little while ago and there was kind of it was this post implying that you know let's say someone who who's been in the industry as long as me quite a long time um sort of saying to someone who's new young um sort of well let's see where you are in 20 years it was kind of this thing and loads of people were getting involved in this this thing and sort of going yeah 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 and I and I was like that's not very encouraging to people yeah. coming into our industry. I started when I was 19. You know, and actually at 19, I was really, really keen on being really well educated. I felt, you know, certainly I've learned a lot in uh, beyond the 19 years, you know, and I certainly feel that what I'm doing now is, is you know, is only based upon what I've achieved in that time. But if I'd had people squashing me down at that stage, that would have been so dreadful. And that's that's the thing, these these nurturing environments, if you can make that safe space, I just love that idea of, you know, somebody sort of almost being, almost not a debriefing session, but some, you know, sort of almost support where you can, you just have that space and place to go, do you know what, that, that I'm not entirely sure. A little yeah. while ago, I, at regular, I was doing volunteering in end of life care, and it was it was amazing. I loved it; it was so rewarding. And there was there was supervision options, and I didn't, I you know, we would meet at times, but I I always knew it was there, but didn't feel I needed it. And mm. and there's just not anything like that. There are tricky moments when working with people. There are tricky moments where you're just not feeling it's quite working right. And we need to be able to be supportive. So I, you know, I'm I really hope and I'm very sure that that will be an amazing space, not only for you, for you know, a, that being a massive achievement, but also that that will be amazing for the people that become part of your team. So mm. obviously massive loads of luck. <laughs> Congratulations for being able to do that. Um, I wanted to um, sort of check in with you. I know we've talked about loads and loads of things. So just wanted to check in with you if there was anything that you wanted to sort of say on this webcast that we hadn't covered um, or sort of reach out to the FitPro community um it over to you anything yeah <laughs> that <laughs> joke it's really no I do that do those enough uh, as it is uh I suppose it's to say because we, we can get a little bit stuck with infighting particularly on, on a technical side of are oh, they don't do that right you know if you look at things like Instagram not that I'm saying it's the uh the you know the arbiter of everything in the fitness world but when somebody posts something, usually there's about 12,000 comments saying, oh, they didn't do that right. They didn't do that squat right. Or you should never squat. Or it just, it just rolls down and down. And it it would be so, it would be to encourage people and say, you know what, it doesn't have to be like that. So that whatever you post is, you know, torn down in flames. I don't, I don't have much engagement with that world, particularly for that reason. Uh, I instead think... What what can what can I do every day to be in in the best place to use my skills and be stretched, and to find that feeling of um, changing people's lives 
see the difference it makes to people and i am there i mean god i've just turned 50 so it's taken a little while uh but it's brilliant i love it and not because i feel like ah uh -huh, i've made it i haven't i definitely haven't and i worry you know to myself how will i make a sustainable life like this when i get into my 60s and 70s because i'm probably not going to be out coaching people uh well maybe but probably not um and so you can go out there, use your skills. So it's not a waste of time learning anatomy and physiology. It's not a waste of time learning these bits and then trying them out. Actually, you could find yourself in a situation where you use them all the time. And when you come out of sessions, you also realize, God, there's so much I don't know. There's so much I don't know. Let's go and look at, so for me this year, pain has been a big one. I've noticed some trends in my clients because they're all 40 to 60. Uh, and they all, without fail, have uh, concerns or uh, worries about pain they might experience or pain they're not that they're experiencing now, but that if they do this exercise, will they experience pain or are they capable? And it's it's a real thing. And I've learned there's actually much more to pain than meets the eye. A lot. I very much was brought up even through my sports therapy and rehab uh, learnings from a great physio uh, was that structure is damaged, you're in pain. Mm -hmm. And it's not that simple. Almost all of my clients haven't got structures that are damaged. They might have had an injury 10 years ago where they fell off their bike, but they're still talking today about their knee that they hurt when they fell off their bike. And you begin to realize, okay, there's a lot of brain involved here. It's a lot of yeah. thought, a lot of perception around pain, which is affecting how they feel and how yes. they respond to my exercise prescription. You know, you can see it on their face. If it's one of them, they just look at it and go, yeah, that, yeah. that face. And one of my clients who I asked two weeks ago and said, so just tell me, what is it about that exercise? Do you, is it pain on a scale of one to 10? Is it seven out of 10? She said, no, it's not, it's not that. And she goes, I just, I just don't like it. And it began to promote that thought of, hmm, just don't like it. That's not, I've got pain. It's not, I find it too easy. It's not anything like that. It's, I have a feeling which is not right mm. about that exercise. Even though, yeah. you know, I hasten to add the exercise is perfectly safe. <laughs> not yes, okay. I, I gave them a, you know, 70 kilo med ball and said, jump squat it. Uh, it was, <laughs> that was uh, relatively innocuous. So mm. that would be my message is to approach it like you're confident in what you do, but there's so much you absolutely do not know and it'll be that way forever. But use that as a spur to learn more, talk to your clients, ask them, you know, ask them questions about, so why have you said that? You know, I, I thought that was quite cool, that thing. And you're not so much because it's, yeah. it's a very malleable thing. So the, the point is, it can be brilliant. I'm enjoying yeah. myself more than I have for decades. And that doesn't, by the way, mean before I, anybody thinks it, it doesn't mean I'm earning a million pounds. Uh, it doesn't mean I've got thousands of clients. Actually, I've got a small client base um, because I operate, as I talked to you about previously, a retainer yes. system. And that's a whole yeah. other question. Uh, but I am enjoying it. I can see the difference it's making to people. And they're telling me, you know, I feel different. It's not, I got bigger biceps, you know, being in better shape, cool, definitely, you know, a bit slimmer, cool. But being a different person and having a different view of their future, that's quite emotional for them. It that's really is. Absolutely. Yeah. So, as I'm listening to you, Pete, and when we've spoken before, I think you're very wise. <laughs> Where does that work? <laughs> I do, right. Um, and I, do you think your wisdom, uh, the, the word wisdom, I'm not just saying this because you turned 50, and bizarrely, I just turned 50 as well. So what month did you turn 50? Thank you. What month were you 50? September. 10th. October. For anybody who wants to send, send me a pr birthday present. October. I know, yeah. Yeah, I was October, so you're just a little bit older than me. Hurrah, hurrah. Shows, and there's the wisdom. Shows. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah, so wisdom, right? So 
you um absolutely with what you're saying i think anyone tuning into this will think blimey he's a wise one all right <laughs> Where does that wisdom come from? Is that genuinely doing something that you love doing? Like for me, you know, when you say, I just hear you talking. And when I spoke to you the other day about your business and stuff, you know, it, it sounds like it's fulfilling. So is wisdom because you're just in a good space or is this years of experience or is this education? Where is that coming from? Well, this is um, on the basis that I do possess the aforementioned wisdom, which is obviously for other people to decide. <clears throat> I, I suppose it's having failed at quite a few things. Um, I've always been an optimist and it's led me down roads where I've been very optimistic and put money into things and lost a lot of money and thought, you know, that was just your optimism speaking. You, you didn't really listen enough to what was going on in the environment. And education particularly has quite a bit of that because I love education, but I understand that it's not easy. It's not an easy pathway to bring to people because they don't always see it the same way as you. So mm -hmm. failure, multiple failures I've, I've had, and you dust yourself off and think, I might not do that again because well, it certainly wasn't right for then. Who knows? It might be good in 10 years time. So there's a bit of that being battle worn. Um, but I, I think there's something I would say, and it's quite specific. I adopted a principle over the last five years, which was brought to me from a couple of people. One particular, a former business partner who was older and wiser than I. And it was this concept of ikigai, a Japanese concept, which is to create your life. You want a fulfilling life and, you know, rewarding you um, create it on the bisection of four, there's four or five factors. One, you look to do things that you love doing. Two, you do things you're very, very good at. Three, you do things that the world needs. And four, you do things that people will pay for. If you can get the bisection of those four right in the middle, where it does all of them, yeah. you're on to something. And for this business, uh, I feel like that is where it is at. And, and it's much, much easier than previous businesses where I've flogged myself to the bone. Yeah. Found things really hard and that frustrating. Why can't people see this is this is amazing? And people go, yes, yeah, amazing. I'm not going to buy it, though. Uh, whereas now doing what I do and. I just love it. You know, I stood on a client's driveway the other morning at 7.30 in the morning, sun's coming up over the hills, beautiful rolling hills. She hands me a cup of tea and says, how are you doing this morning? I, I just said to her, I have to pinch myself. Is this real? That I'm allowed to have this much fun um, and, and I'm being paid for it as well, which is almost embarrassing because I'd do it in theory for nothing. Obviously, everybody got to pay the bills. <laughs> But that's that's where it that's where it is, and so I feel really fortunate. And I think, right, well, let's go for it then. If if it is good, let's test it and see if it'll get any bigger. Great, love that. And I think you know when you really find something that takes all of those four things that you mentioned, you really do know, don't you? Yeah. So you know, and I I suppose with anything that we. Um, record or whatever I, you know not only do we want to help inform and inspire and stuff but we want these opportunities for people to reflect a little bit as well and sort of think well what could I do differently you know am I where I want to be you know so thank you because that's I'm, I'm going to be looking up later but you know well, you I'm go. very lucky I, there you go I'm very lucky when you said those things I'm like tick 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 because all of those things apply to me as well and I think it really shows when yeah. people are in that good place so mm. good on you good on you so Pete look um where where can people follow you obviously they best do your courses after all of this better than they yeah. so they can obviously go onto the fit pro website and uh, look up we have a category called anatomy and physiology obviously yeah. and all of your courses are in there and um the reason I can confidently say we should do them is I actually pursued them 
because I thought they were that good, right? So it wasn't that you came to us, I came to you because I wanted them on the platform. So they really are excellent. So where can people follow you and, and, and keep in contact and stuff? So we're on Facebook and Instagram is the primary area. Um, I'll be completely honest, there's been a temporary hiatus with my other business growing so quickly a lot of my attention has been drawn there but there's loads of content up there and you'll look at it and go oh yeah that's that body mapper thing with the drawing and stuff so uh, <laughs> on instagram the handle is the body mapper and in fact i think it's the same uh, on facebook it's it's the body mapper so if you search those up you'll come across us and you'll see videos of people moving around with drawings on them and uh and stills of the oh, same yeah. Um, Wicked. Yeah, it's all, all good fun. Absolutely. Look, so Pete, obviously I'm going to say a massive thank you to you. So oh, thank, thank you. you for your time and sharing so much. It's very valuable. Well, not very, it's hugely valuable for people to hear people's story and reflections and insights. So thank you for sharing it the way that you have. I really appreciate it. Really my pleasure. And thank you too. Thank you. That's okay. We're so damn polite, aren't we? It must be we're both 50. Um, so I'm also I'm also gonna say uh, a massive thank you for the people tuning in as well. We, you know, kudos to anybody that takes the time to reflect on on where they are in their own journey and wanting to upskill. It's it's really, really important to me that people do that in our industry. And um we yeah, so kudos to you for all listening in so thank you we're all gonna say goodbye now aren't we pete should we do a cheesy yeah, wave is, is that way wavy thing <laughs> <laughs> that's all we should do thanks everybody thank you <laughs>